Hello and greetings from the Midwest, where we just got hit with an indefinite amount of snow. I'm talking easily 15 inches in my backyards within like four days. And, you know, I'm obviously not alone. And in fact, a lot of new EV owners, this was their first taste of winter. And it made quite a ripple on forums and other popular places to talk about EVs. And especially a lot of these people, it's their first winter with a Ford F-150 Lightning. So that led to tons of posts of like, hey, my dash is saying I'm only getting 160 miles of range. What is going on? Ford quickly came back and said, all right, hey, here's eight tips to make the most out of your charges. And uh, I hope this helps, basically. So there's a lot of people kind of like, oh, man, I knew about winter range loss, but this is insane. So hopefully these eight tips, which I'm going to recycle today and kind of dive a little more into detail with, with my experience driving EVs, uh, we're going to look at them, talk about them, and just what is going on? We're going to take a look. What's up, everybody? It is Larry here, and we are doing uh, the eight tips that Ford recommends to keep your F-150 Lightning as charged as possible. And it's fine. I found this kind of interesting mostly because some of them are basically like just no brainers. And there's a couple good things to note. But if anyone did their research about buying this vehicle, they were probably already doing this, which makes me a little worried that like, you're probably just going to have to live with the lower range. And I seen people post things like uh, 160, I think was the lowest I saw from OSR garage who had his lightning for a little bit. Uh, I saw a couple in 50 degree weather saying 170 and granted those were the estimates. We got to keep that in mind, but it's based off their previous driving history. And when we talk about a, usually it's like, about a 20% range loss on an EV and it could be anywhere from 30% down to like 15 on a really efficient vehicle. 20% is a safe estimate. So seeing 160, 170, 180, those make sense of what you real realistically will get on the standard pack battery. I should note that getting the 220 range battery on a Ford Lightning you you got to expect a little bit of a loss, definitely. And if you're not going into it expecting that, you're going to probably not like driving this thing in winter. Like I've had a Tesla that I very much experienced winter range loss. Like it happens. So it's a, it's a part of owning an EV. But long story short, here's eight tips to help that. Let's get into it. The first one, a no brainer. Park it in your garage as much as you can. Not much to say there. Obviously, it's warmer in your garage. You should do that. It's not going to be exposed to the elements. Yeah, keep it in your garage if that's even a possibility. Some garages can't even fit a truck. So uh, I know everyone can't do that one. Two, keep your lightning plugged in when parked. Another one that is like, oh, you don't like your car to not be out of energy? Well, why don't you keep it plugged in? Okay, thanks for it. <laughs> now, this one is very Ford specific and makes sense. So in your Ford Pass app, you can precondition your truck before a trip. And this will help you get the most out of your battery, especially if you're charging on the way, it's going to charge faster when you get there. So the more information you input into your lightning, the more you're going to get back out of it. So especially on a long trip, you're going to want to keep it fully juiced and take advantage of the technology that you have. That is one that some people who've just swapped over to an EV might overlook. So it is worth presetting your destinations and stuff before you dive into this. Now, this one seems counterintuitive and is pretty interesting. So four is, if equipped, use the heated seats and steering wheel as a primary heat to reduce energy consumed by your HVAC. So Ford does not have a heat pump, so it is extra draining on the battery when you are using your hot air, uh, which is another reason why winter, winter range loss happens is because you're using your heat so much more. Um, so basically, this is saying use your heated seats instead because it's going to help with range. And this is one that EV haters quickly will be like, oh, great, you just spent 80 grand on a car that you can't even use your heat. And that one's tough because they do have a point. <laughs> it does suck. Uh, but if you're on a long trip and you're trying to make the most out of your mileage, you know, 
I don't know. I, I would almost lean into this one if you're down to the wire and you're looking for ways to like hyper mile, you swatch, you swap to this. But I'm a guy who wants to use all the features that are on my vehicle. So just a good thing to have in your back pocket in case of emergency is what I would say. <laughs> like you don't want to pick up your friend in your $80,000 truck and be like, oh, whoa, 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 just use your heated seats. Don't, t- don't turn those on. We can't afford that right now. We got to make it there. Um, it's, they're like, what? <laughs> All right. Anyway, number five here, uh, when charging, turn off the heater if possible or lower the temperature enough to remain comfortable. Uh, Again, that's basically the same thing. (laughs) Number six, probably common sense, but hey, it's worth noting. It says if you're parking your truck outside, make sure to remove all the ice and snow uh, because obviously if you have a big bed full of snow, that's going to affect your aerodynamics and weight. Uh, obviously if you have ice chunks below, it's not going to let the correct airflow in and you are going to probably start using a lot more energy than your truck is meant to do. So clean off your truck is basically (laughs) number six, seven, really scraping the barrel on these last couple, but it says, don't drive it hard. Basically, uh, keep it at low speeds or moderate speeds. Don't slam your torque. Don't try to get that zero to 60 time in your, in your books. Just keep it easy because obviously the more energy your car uses, the faster your battery goes down. So keep it slow, keep it steady. Kind of feel dumb saying that one because if you don't already know that by now, man, I'm sorry. (laughs) Eight, another common sense one, obviously, but hey, maybe it's worth looking. This one is especially stupid because your car will tell you if you're not doing this, but it says uh, ensure your tires that are a proper pressure, which yeah, obviously it'll say that because... Uh, you have probably all the bells and whistles on this that will at the very least tell you your tire pressure. So yeah, keep it at the proper pressure. That's hard to say, proper pressure. So if I could sum this all up of what I did in the winter is just keep it plugged in. Like obviously if you're going on a long trip, just charge it before you need to actually charge. Just keep it charged. Like If you're after you own an EV for a little bit, you get very much accustomed to just stopping to charge on a road trip. So in winter, the only shift I made was I would stop at everyone, even if I was at like 80 percent or or even if I was like only at like 50 or 60 percent and I could make it to two other chargers, I would try to pull over and use those ones and just keep it at a high level. Even if I only stopped for like 10 or 15 minutes at each time, it just gave me more of a peace of mind sort of deal. So I would lean into overcharging at least during the winter because it, it, it never hurts to have your tank full, uh, hypothetical tank full. And I'll say this again. The standard battery of 220 miles is going to be tough to navigate winters, especially on family trips, going far places. If you are going somewhere that is past 200 miles, past 150 miles, charge, definitely charge. Don't risk it. You're going to want to charge halfway and, and get yourself back up so you have a little bit to make the room like Really plan out your trips if you are doing this. And if you are someone who has not made an order yet and you are considering an EV, these are the times that will remind you what to purchase. Like, for instance, I have an order in at a standard range and hearing all this, I was like, oh my gosh, I forgot about winter range loss, even though I owned an EV. It's just a quick reminder of, you know, EVs are awesome. I obviously love them but there's a lot of room and there's a lot of things that you got to get used to. I want to, I'd say it's an even trade off because obviously there's things that EVs aren't good at, but there's a lot of things that gas vehicles aren't, are good at either. So you are making trades on certain things. And if they don't make sense, then stick with your gas vehicle. There's nothing wrong with that. But if you're willing to make accommodations for winter range loss and a couple other things, then yeah, get an electric vehicle. It's the, it's really that easy, I promise. Anyways, I'm going to end the video here, but I would like to know if you guys have seen anything on your vehicles yet, especially on the extended range. All the complaints I saw were very much focused on the standard range batteries. So maybe it's because that extra, you know, 80 to 100 miles that the extended range gets they, those users are just not having issues because they have all the all, all that extra range. 
but maybe not. Maybe they're seeing it too and they're just not a, as active online. So if you guys have had uh, issues or, or triumphant stories of how you keep your vehicle uh, lasting longer, I'd love to hear all of that. So let me know and I'll end the video here. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye.